What's up hobbyists, it's Steven here with Hobby Revolution. Thank you for checking out this brand new channel that's about discovering your and my favorite hobbies and allow us to continue learning about the things we're passionate about. Today we're kicking off our first series. It's gonna be about backpacking. That's something I've wanted to do for a couple years. I finally got the chance to do it this summer. I went on some amazing trips. And so today we're gonna check out my solo three day, two night trip in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Let's check it out. All right, we're at the trailhead about to kick it off. This place is surprisingly busy. All packed, got the boots on, well stretched. Let's hit it. Just all these chimneys lined up all the way down the trail. You can imagine these are probably all old vacation homes or cabins. 0.4 miles in. Something I like to do before I start hiking, I call it prehydrating. So for the past three hours in the car, I've been chugging a bunch of water and the sound of this river is not helping. All right, we've officially climbed a thousand feet. It's time to put on the oxygen. Just kidding. But honestly, this trail has been uphill the whole way, but I'm digging it. the end of Jake's Creek. A little sneak preview of what's to come tomorrow. Just a matter of steps. The colors of these leaves are changing, that's awesome. It's cool to see the geology changing around us come from Dirt to even the, the dirt's just kind of gravel, these cool rock structures. Here I am at the peak of Dripping Springs Mountain, 4,812 feet in the air. Now they call this a payoff when you have a really big hike and you finally get to somewhere, it kind of makes it worth it. Are you ready to see the view? Breathtaking. All right, we are getting close to camp here. And it is definitely cooling down, which going back to something I'm very excited about. In the summer, I enjoy cooking, and food is definitely kind of one of my luxuries on the trail. I don't mind eating well if it means a little extra weight, but um, it's starting to get cool enough where I'm still comfortable. But the thought of, you know, having either tea or I'm going to make a, like a pad thai ramen tonight and, you know, something nice and hot and getting in my tent and actually getting in my sleeping bag. I am very excited for that. Sign for water over there. I'm gonna go check out the water situation while it's still light. Well, it's nothing to write home about, but it is water. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just kind of uh, gorge myself now. All right, it is bright and early. I don't know what day it is. Monday morning. Got a really, really good night's sleep. I went down to that little creek and filled up on my water. I had a lot to drink this morning. I guess I'm going to soak some oatmeal on the way. I'd rather get hiking. It's still obviously pretty dark. Uh, my goal is to get back to camp early and do what I did last night. It was awesome to be cooking in the daylight and go to bed early. I could have used it, um, but man, oh, I slept like 10 hours. So it was absolutely incredible. It was cold, it is cold. I am grateful that I do feel very prepared. I brought a lot of stuff, so I've got layers to shed. I did leave the pants in the car. Didn't regret it last night. We'll see how it goes today. I'm a big shorts guy. Pants really do kind of annoy me, but um, I don't know, I feel prepared. I was I was warm in the sleeping bag. The sleeping bag did awesome. I was able to tighten up around my neck and so it was, it was very good. So I'm about to pack up camp and uh, about to hit the trail in the dark. Got the mountains over there with the stars. The mountains over here with the sunrise. This is absolutely incredible. All right, pulling over to get breakfast and also shed a layer. I brought this jacket and while it's warm, it's very absorbent. So I'm worried if I wear it too long, if I sweat in it, it's never really gonna dry out right. So 
I'm starting to warm up just from moving around. Um, guessing I'm about a mile out from the Appalachian Trail. Um, I've technically stepped foot on the Appalachian Trail. I've never really hiked on it, so I think this will be kind of a cool moment. Uh, significant trail in, in the backpacking community, of course. A lot of history there. I have a lot of interest in doing a through hike. The idea of being out for a long stretch and covering a lot of miles. Next stop is the Appalachian Trail, heading north. Alright, here it is, the AT. Tomorrow I am heading to Clingman's Dome. For me it is not 7.4 miles away. I'm heading that direction, but then I'm going to cut south and take an extended loop to get to the base of the mountain and then spend much of Tuesday going up, down, and back to my car. So, without further ado, journey on the Appalachian Trail. There's a vibe. There's definitely a vibe on this trail. I'm digging it. The other trails had a feel, you know, hey, maybe I'm one of a select number of people who've been through here, at least recently, but on this trail, I am thinking more about how many people have been on this trail. Very cool. Shepherd's ball up here, 5,598 feet in the air. Now we go down to camp, which is going to be a nice change of pace. Let's head on down. Curious to see if Pop Tarts taste any better. 5,000 feet in the air. Seven miles in for the day, saying goodbye to the AT. Get on the Welsh Ridge Trail, probably stop for lunch. This is my next intersection in two and a half miles. That'd put me, I don't know what time, but it's still pretty early. It's like 10, 10, 15, had a little snack, feeling good, gonna keep going. It'd be nice to sit down, take the pack off, get this headlamp off. Obviously I don't need that anymore, but it'd be nice to kind of readjust. So we'll be back on the Appalachian Trail tomorrow on the way back to the car. Either there's a bear out here, or a hiker with a very, very rich diet. In what could have been catastrophic news, my GPS app is not working. <laughs> but luckily, what I do have is a map and some written down directions of where I'm going. So I did come to a junction. I don't think this is what I'm gonna turn on yet, but I'm just gonna go ahead and see if this is where I wanna eat lunch or keep going. Perfect spot for a break. I'm making almost too good of time. I'm afraid of getting to camp way too early. I can't go any further because the next campsite was booked when I looked at it. You can't camp anywhere you want here, so I'm gonna try and take my time so I don't get to camp and be super bored. I wish I could just keep going. I've got a lot of got a lot left in me, but camp is maybe only two or three miles away at this point. But I'll take a little time to enjoy. kind of like these river crossings they're kind of fun i'd like to find some more ways to make them efficient i know that they have shoes that dry out a lot quicker and i see some people just marching through these without you know dropping pace but i don't know if i'm ready to be walking around with soggy feet but until then we're just going to see if we can do these boots do a pretty dang good job keeping all the water out so if i don't go too deep like above my ankle i have no problem just walking through there so there you go 
visit Gorilla. This isn't my campsite, but the bears got savvy to uh, this place being a food source, I guess. We're gonna take the long way around. Well, the long way around proved to be a soggy boot situation. But GPS is still not working, but I know we've gotta be really dang close to camp, so at least I can let him air out for a while. All right, camp 69 into day two. Kind of a cool shot behind me. It's definitely a longer day. The whole GPS thing kind of had me wigged out. I like tracking maybe too often. Maybe that's the lesson learned about exactly where I am, how far I've come. So I definitely spent less time concerned about the miles today, but made showing up to camp a little bit of a surprise. It is 3.40 p.m., which sucks because there's a lot of daylight left and I'm gonna have a lot of time on my hands, but um, it's gonna make for an awkward day tomorrow. I have about five and a half miles to Klingman's Dome. I was thinking, since I have such an early night, it might be cool to get there by sunrise, but I need to take a look. The river crossings today were pretty intense. I uh, need to decide if those you know, should be done during the daylight and not at night. I enjoyed the night hiking this morning, or the morning hiking, if you will. I uh, felt like I got a nice start to my day and got me to camp early. I wouldn't mind getting in my car awfully early tomorrow. I do have a drive home tomorrow. All right, night two in the tent. I've got my tea this time. Oh, I'm all bundled up. I love this weather. I got the river just off this little ledge by the campsite. It's so peaceful. Um, did not have any luck with that fire, but I had two friends, Rob and Julian, were a, a son and dad. They had a nice fire that let me over. I was able to at least attempt to dry off my socks a little bit. I think the goal is to get another early start tomorrow overall. Day two was good. Looking forward to day three. 609, we're taking off, heading to Klingman's Dome. Cool trail, very rocky, and big boulders. It's nice to change it up a little bit. Well, it quickly went from Klingman's for the sunrise to Klingman's for breakfast to let's just make it to Klingman's. <laughs> it's been a tough morning. It's been good though, but we're climbing, 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 climbing. That mountain right up there. To my look over, I'm getting higher and higher up in reference to that, so that's been kind of encouraging. It's hard to gauge. Every time I cross a river, I'm like, oh, we're here on the map, and then I find out that there's river crossings that aren't on the map, and so it's it's honestly very difficult to gauge how far I have to go, but uh, we're certainly getting there. Like, there was a campsite I was going to use as a reference, and there ended up being two or three of the same number of campsites, so just kind of using the map as a general guide. I know I'm on the right trail, but I wish I had a little better idea of distance, but... Just gonna keep on trucking. I'm also very excited to see people with small backpacks. People with small backpacks means cars. Cars mean parking lot. Parking lot means Klingman's Dome. Klingman's Dome means public restrooms. Small backpack equals restroom. It only took three days, but I got a view. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, just leaving Klingman's Dome. It's nice to see some hustle and bustle, a lot of people in cars, and it's kind of a nice change of pace, but got a long way to go. I didn't want to enjoy it for too long. I think I've got about 13 miles. I'm changing my route. I'm gonna stay on the AT a little bit longer. Uh, the original route I had planned had a lot of water crossings. My boots are finally dry and um, the mileage is comparable, but at the very least, if I'm not getting wet or changing out my shoes or socks, then I'm gonna save some time. So it's like 11 a.m. It's not that bad. First number two in the woods. I guess there's no going back now. It was bound to happen eventually.
about a half a mile from the next intersection getting off the AT and I'm not shot. It's been a it's been a mental game at this point. My body is getting a little wore down, but nothing too bad. It's just the mental trudging along. So hopefully about half a mile I'm gonna stop for good good rest to kick the boots off, have some lunch, and then that'll put me I think eight-ish miles from the car. So the final stretch so we're kind of taking it one trail at a time it's a good way to, for me to break it up and kind of give myself something to look forward to getting ready to finishing up the two night three day adventure here at the smokies i'm guessing somewhere around 45 miles probably by the time it's all said and done awesome trip got to see some colors i feel like it may have been a little bit early for peak colors but no doubt i saw certain areas that had lots of just extremely vivid reds and oranges and yellows and that was a big influence of why i came this time of the year today was a mentally grueling day but of course the victory is when you get through it that sticks around a lot longer than the the sucky part so sometimes being out here for me is about getting uncomfortable and pushing myself and today i think was definitely that 